Eve, would you lead us in a pledge, please? Please stand if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Wes, could you open us with prayer, please? Let's pray. Gracious and transcendent God, we acknowledge your presence with us today. We acknowledge your presence in the world and your presence in the depths of our own spirit. We ask that you will empower us to be productive, empower us to be community, empower us to learn and empower us to enhance. We thank you for that possibility, and we thank you for your presence. In your name, amen. Do I have a motion to approve the September minutes? <coughs> Gary votes. Do I have a second? Well, honey, we'll get to that. Is there a second? Did I have to read them first? Yes. Lou seconds. Now, is there any discussion or corrections? Just my name. My name is Estelle. Oh, okay. First or last name? First. First name. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion or corrections? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The minutes are passed. <coughs> Can everyone hear me? Well, I'm going to take a second to ask for and pray for world peace. I think we need a little bit of calmness right now and hoping that everyone will stay safe and far away and near. Okay, on that note, COVID update. Um, we have continued to have pretty much every week at least somebody with a positive case of COVID. And right now, as of last Thursday, another staff member tested positive. Of course, she is on quarantine. But again, just a reminder, as the weather, if it ever, starts getting cooler and more bugs are in the air, please, if you're in a really crowded area, please wear your mask if, if you so desire, but it's it's to protect you, of course. We are having our COVID clinic tomorrow. The next vaccine clinic is tomorrow. Of course, if your name starts with A through G, you're, uh, you, you come in here at nine o'clock in the pack. And if your last name begins with H through O, you're scheduled at 10 a.m. And those of you whose last names begin with P through Z, you'll come in here at 11 a.m. So we have a good amount of folks, I think um, over 80 right now, so that's great. And that will help with the new variants, keep us a little bit safer. Window washing begins today. Um, and Judy, I'm gonna borrow that, thank you. And so you all should have received, and I know some of you haven't, um, and I need to get these back from maintenance and at the front desk so you can have these. This is when we have scheduled services like AC check, uh, HVAC check and window washing. And you're going to be away from your apartment. If it's okay for the service people to enter with the escort of a Walnut Village uh, maintenance team member, you use the beige side. If you don't want them in your apartment while you're gone, then go ahead and use the brown side. But these aren't to be confused with your green and red, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Thank you. You'll, we'll also be doing the HVAC checks to make sure that your furnace is working and it's gonna start for you in the as we get colder weather coming up. Um, I have 
put the August unaudited financials in the binder in the library entitled Fiscal Year Budget Presentation and Financials. So feel free to check that out. Our revenue is low, uh, not desperately so. And we do have two move-ins in October, so that's excellent, and a move-in in November. So we're excited to welcome those folks. So more details to follow on welcoming them. Um, we had our first doc talk with Anthony Yaniguez. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. He's a nurse practitioner who's here every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the clinic. This does not take the place of our nurses. It's just additional uh, services. So if you can't get to urgent care, if you're not feeling good, you feel like you need an antibiotic, it's a lot more convenient to have uh, Anthony who can write the prescription, see you in our clinic, write the prescription, send it to the pharmacy, so it's convenient for you and you get the meds that you need. So take advantage of that. And then we'll also be doing a doctor talk every month because we know that you guys like lectures and Judy's working on getting additional uh, lectures or educational opportunities in here as well. Of course, we do unfortunately have some upcoming services of our village family members. So Matt Greenidge is this Friday here in the chapel. Bernie Hockman's service is off site. I'm not sure what time you guys are leaving. They'll be assigned up tomorrow. We're leaving at 11.45. We're leaving at 11.45 to get so you need to leave earlier. Excuse me. No, leaving at 11.15. They're leaving at 11.15, okay. service at noon, Memorial Gardens in Brea, and then the Celebration of Life is planned here, October 23rd at 4 p.m. in the Red Chair Lounge. And then our sweet, lovely Lucy Kano um, passed on Thursday morning, and her service will be here October 27th. More details to follow. Something that Judy and I have been kicking around after a conversation with Patty Trevor, who I don't see, yes, she is, there she is, um, on purpose. Something, you know, we all need a little bit of purpose, and we want to try to get more, more folks engaged and coming out of their apartments. And so we're going to put together a series of purpose clubs, and of course, because we care, really fits the bill, bill on that one with the lap robes that they've been doing and of course donating to really worthwhile causes. And we're wondering if there are some men who are good with woodworking, if you care to make toys or ornaments for needy children. Um, we're talking about maybe mentorships of uh, elementary and intermediate school kids. Somebody who maybe wants to be a pilot, may want to spend some time talking to Doug somebody who wants to be a nurse, maybe talk to Terry. So I think it might be um, a great program. So I'm gonna be, be putting together a survey and asking for your feedback on what you'd like to see, what your purpose would be if you were able to express it here. And then finally, the Great American Shakeout is coming up uh, Thursday, I believe, October 19th, 1023 a.m. We'll announce it via fire alarm and the PA system. And of course, we're gonna throw a couple of monkey wrenches in there to make sure that the staff and the emergency volunteers can practice their craft during the drill. So um, look forward to that. And of course, as you remember, when the fire alarm goes off, you're either going to hang, if you're able, the green okay outside your door, your front door, or you're going to hang the red help if you've got a maintenance issue, a care issue, a housekeeping issue, and of course, staff's going to be going floor to floor, door to door to double check, make sure you're okay, and of course, triage those of you who have the red door tag out. And on that note, I will hand it off to Wait the next. Doc, no, you have a question? Well, what should we look forward to on RSV shot? So we were going to do the RSV shot here. Um, we're not. We're not providing that. That was something that you need to talk to your doctor about because there are um, there are certain comorbidities 
that your doctor needs to look at to determine if you're a good candidate for it, the meds that you're currently taking. So right now it's new enough that it needs to be from your primary provider uh, making that order at this time. Hopefully it'll become much more normalized and next year we can operate with the flu if in fact it's safe to do so. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, these are the totals that we had at the end of September for each of the accounts that we manage. The music committee had $16,327. Employee Appreciation Fund, $87,974. Musical Theater Birthday Show, uh, $30,628. Um, Clay's Art Studio, $175, and the scholarship fund of $33,844 for a total under all of our accounts of $169,152. Anybody have any questions uh, about that, that report? Now I'd like to talk to you a little about the Employee Appreciation Fund. Uh, I know that Many of us uh, were concerned about the information received that we received from Front Porch uh, saying that any funds that we donated this year to our Employee Appreciation Fund would be subject to withholding. And up until this year, we have always managed to stay right below uh, the threshold of where withholding would take place, and it doesn't matter how much we give this year, withholding will be applied to that. And uh, uh, as a result, the executive board has met twice and once with uh, uh, Danny Enfield to uh, find out how we're going to attack this and how we're going to manage this because it's a new and unusual situation for us. Uh, one of the things that we have decided uh, is that we are not going to ask, as you've seen in the letter, we're not asking for any more funds this year than we did last year. Uh, the 9.5 percent rent increase that we experienced last year uh, created a lot of emotions for a lot of people, all from anger clear to being scared. And so as a result, your executive board has decided that we would not ask you for any more money this year than we did last year. On the other side of that, I've talked to several of our employees and they are just as concerned as we are because now they are convinced because of withholding they are not going to get as much from the Employee Appreciation Fund as they did last year. And what we plan to do, if we can, as you well know, I just told you that we have some money uh, in the Employee Appreciation Fund that was left over uh, from several years ago when they closed the care center. What we plan to do is subsidize the amount of money that is given this year and subsidize that up to the point where we can provide to our employees no less than what they got last year. And I don't know how everybody feels about that, but several residents have told me that we think our employees should be getting more than what we're asking. So that, that's, that's where we are uh, with that. Now, understanding that this money that we have in reserve uh, because we are subsidizing with the withholding this year, I will just tell you that money's gonna, not going to last very long. So probably next year, we will be asking you for more than we did this year. But we're also hoping that our rate increase stays below what we've seen in the recent past. Uh, with that information, I would entertain any questions that you might have now about the Employee Appreciation Fund. Yes, Bob. Uh, question, how do you divide up the funds among employees, does that include salaried employees or just hourly? That includes both. The question was, how do we how do we divide up the monies that we give to our employees? Uh, the executive director, I might add, does not get any compensation from us, uh, but the other employees do. Several years ago, we ran into a problem, and it wasn't while I was your treasurer, but uh, uh, the IRA, we were, it's based on the hours worked that each employee works. And we divided that and graduated that down from the amount that we were giving down to 
amount that was half of that for people who hadn't worked here hardly any time at all. The IRS said what you are doing is you are creating another hourly wage. So what we do now is we break it down into groups in ranges of hours worked. If they work from say 1,200 hours to 1,000 hours, all the people that worked in that range are put together. Now it doesn't become a, specifically, a specific hourly wage and we break it down into groups like that. And we try to weight that on the heavy end so that we are able to give our employees more than if it were just a straight uh, linear uh, equation. Does that answer your problem all right? Any other questions? We still have some questions for Front Porch. Uh, we, we don't know if, uh, and we're hoping that this doesn't happen, but we would like to see their employee appreciation monies that we give as a separate check so that it isn't rolled in with normal wages and stuff. I don't know if we can do that, but we're going to make that request to Front Porch and see if we can do that. And in the past, we have written all the checks. We can't do that this year because we are not in the position to apply withholding. So Front Porch will be writing those checks and we will just write one big check from here with the monies that you give and the money that we're gonna to use to subsidize withholding. We will send that money to Front Porch. They will do all the calculations for uh, withholding and send out the check in whichever manner they decide. But we're hoping that we can get that as a separate check because we really feel like it's, it should be, uh, I guess, specifically them knowing that it is from us in a separate check. But that, that's kind of our thinking now. Yes, Marilyn? Yeah, so we're going to pay tax on the check that they get, right? Yeah, they the, the check that they receive that is employee appreciation fund monies, yes, withholding is going to be applied to that. And with that, we're, uh, you know, several people have, as I mentioned, have said, we think that we should give our employees more. We're hoping that you know, in your mind that you will feel generous this year and help us in that regard, knowing that our reserve is going to be eaten up uh, to a certain extent with the monies that we subsidize to make up that. And we're going to try to give them as much uh, or a little more than we have in the past because over the past two or three years, we've seen inflation reach almost 9%. So their buying power is being reduced just like ours. Yes. Uh, the recommended dollar amount is in the letter that you receive from Elaine. And uh, I, I might add, if you, if you put a pencil on paper to this, and if you do a, a, just a calculation on the monies that you pay for dining, you know, $5 a point, 90 points per month, and times 12, if you applied a 15% gratuity to that, you would see that that is well over $800. So that's just on dining. That doesn't include housekeeping, it doesn't include maintenance, it doesn't include all the people who keep our patios clean and do all of the behind the scenes tasks that help us each day, we don't see uh, all of that is included. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, how did we receive, how did we accumulate the reserve? That's what I uh, mentioned earlier, that was when they closed the care center there were quite a number of employees that worked in the care center because that was uh, employee heavy at that point because we had a lot of nurses and stuff. They left early in the year, but some monies had already been donated to the Employee Appreciation Fund, and they left so early in the year they didn't qualify for payment. So that created an amount in our Employee Appreciation Fund that hadn't been there before. So anytime an employee quits or changes jobs, goes someplace else, if he hasn't drawn his, that gets in the that, that, that's right. The employees that quit early, and for those who have just come on board, anybody that has been employed after October 1st doesn't qualify either. We, they get a gift card or something like that, but they are not, uh, they are not in the computations because their hours worked is so, so few. Any other questions? If not, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Okay, we're going to do the committee reports, and we have two chairs who had conflicts or are out of town, so I'm going to read their reports. The first is the food committee. New items on the fall menus were shared. Some of the changes were suggested by residents on the food survey 
that was put in the post by Dining Services. Following a resident's suggestion, appetizers were moved to the left to reduce resident congrega congregation in original placement area. In other words, they moved it away so that people could get around the bar area a little easier. Uh, if you know of a qualified candidate to replace Guillermo Sotelo in the kitchen, please let dining services know. And a secretary is needed for the food committee. Now for hospitality. Today our report is very short. Unfortunately, we didn't welcome any new residents during the month of September. Our committee sent out three get well cards and two sympathy cards. No one completed a prayer shawl. Hope we are able to welcome some new <coughs> residents during the month of October. And now for the library report. Marilyn? Sure, because people just are reading books or looking at books, and they just shove them in because there's a hole. So please, please just put them in the bin. If the bin is right next to behind the desk, right next to the file cabinet. Thank you if you do that. We welcomed a new member on September the 17th. Her name is Linda Townsend, and we appreciate her joining. Robin is checking duplicate books and storage cabinet in the basement. We have CD and DVD players. Anyone need, needs these to hook up to their TV or monitor can be borrowed from the library for one to two weeks. Any resident wishing to write a book review can send it to Kathy Stanick. She'd appreciate it very much because some of you read your own books or get books that you like that you would like to share with us so we know about them. Volunteers will reshelf all of the books. So that's why I'm telling you don't put them, don't start shelving books, we'll do them ourselves. Notable point was the number of fiction versus nonfiction. In the survey, it was very interesting that more people read fiction than they did nonfiction. The resident written books are in a binder behind the returning bin. So if you know any residents, we don't have that many residents, which is fantastic that we do have residents who have written their own books. Holiday books will be updated for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And on the Halloween books that you want, you'll see a little Halloween little pumpkin, and on Thanksgiving, we're looking for a little tiny turkey. And for Christmas, we have a star, a red star. So when you see these little dots on the end of your book, that's what they're saying to read. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marilyn. Music, Judy Phillips. Okay, music. Um, the music committee met on September 27th at 3 p.m. with all members present. We don't meet very often, so this is uh, big news. Um, the agenda included a review of the revisions of the procedure book. Um, we had five new job descriptions written and a property in inventory brought up to date. Um, we had a report on the supplemental grant that was received from the Walnut Village Discretionary Fund which is supervised by the Philanthropy Committee. Um, we had discussion of whether to keep the donation months to March and April, and we decided we would keep those months, so the Music Committee will not ask you for money until March or April, but of course you can give it any time. Discussion of the current status of the search for the Chimer Director, we are still looking for someone who can lead the chimes on Tuesday afternoon. So if you have any suggestions, we are still looking for someone. News from the Corral. Uh, the Corral sang on Saturday, September 23rd, mostly Rogers and Hammerstein Broadway show songs. And in spite of the difficulties with the microphones, we got very good feedback because the tunes were all favorites of yours. The Corral has begun to rehearse for a holiday concert, which will be on Saturday, December 16th. 
Chimer news. Uh, the Chimers are rehearsing for a Sunday morning church service November 19th, and they're also rehearsing for a music program, a Christmas music program, on Tuesday, December 12th. I don't expect you to remember those dates. You will be notified later. They'll, they'll show up in the calendar. And we're still searching for a chime director. Uh, Dee has contacted more colleges and churches, but if you know of a handbell group that we may not have thought of, please let Dee know. Um, the chimers play the same music as handbells, and so we think we might find a director candidate among handbell players. So, uh, are there any questions about the music committee? Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Judy Gary, Musical Theater. Uh oh, it didn't say hello, everyone. But anyway, hello, everyone. <laughs> Forgot that line. Um, thank you for coming to the last birthday show. We had a big group, um, and every, it was very good. Sunny, of course, was as good as always. Everybody seems to like Sunny. I don't know what you know. What those fingers get going. All right, and my annual reminder about the birthday show dinner um, is, you know, for residents only, birthday celebrants, and of course their spouses, or daughters, or significant others living in the same unit. The next birthday show is this Thursday at 3 p.m. in the Bistro. We will be featuring the Hollywood Big Shots in the Bistro. Bistro Courtyard. The Fountain Courtyard, actually. It's going to be in front of the Fountain. You don't want us in the court Bistro? Jake probably doesn't want you in the Bistro. Okay, all right, fine. No Bistro performance this week. It's in the Courtyard. All right. Um, the band, of course, is, uh, there will be a percussionist, which I think is the drums, you know, a bass player, trumpet, trombone, and a fantastic banjo player. This guy can really strum. All the members are uh, performers at Disneyland, and it should be a really good show. They'll do a lot of variety of music. But it's really good. We had them last year, and everybody seemed to like them. Put it outside this year, because it's too noisy in here. So that's it. Have, thank you, we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, Gary. Safety and grounds, Merlin. Hello. Any of you that are swimmers know that the automatic door openers to the pool locker rooms are now fully functioning, both of the hall and the pool. Uh, we've had questions about the outside uh, furniture. Ethan's seeking a good solution to finish the outside furniture better than it was before. We found one. We found one. You found one? Yes. Good. In the next couple days, they'll be starting. Good news. We have found one. So we'll be working on that in the next few days. Uh, lights have been installed on the uh, court yard fountain. We've talked about that for a long time. Uh, they are solar lights, so uh, they should uh, not depend on electricity. Uh, the balls in front of the entrance have been painted a very acceptable color, and we're not <laughs> going to vote on that this morning. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we are recommending that a right turn only sign be placed on the north exit gate. We don't want anyone to get a ticket for turning left. The north gate is right behind us here and it's difficult to see when you're coming out. There is a sign that says right turn only, but it's outside and by the time you go through the gate, why there's cars going 40 miles an hour both directions, and you might not see that. We recommend that we put a sign on the inside of the gate, and while the gate is opening, at least you can read the sign. We don't want to lose any of you, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're short on people now, and uh, uh, you can't get a ticket, so be careful and turn right. I know there's, it's a great temptation when you want to go the other direction. Well, you got that one right, too. I thought about that, but uh, I don't know who's supposed to do that. We'll pass that on. Uh, there's a thick vine right out in front of our 
unit here, and it had broken loose and was out on the sidewalk, and people had been directed uh, with the uh, 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 walking uh, aids to coming this side, and that worked out fine. But uh, with a, a vine hanging out over the fence, uh, it, it wasn't sidewalk, it wasn't safe. So that has been wired up. It isn't necessarily uh, a uh, permanent situation, but that has been done partially. Um, number of other things, but please continue to submit your work orders to the welcome desk. It gets faster response, and uh, that, that's the best way of handling it. The minutes and issues are on the bullet board in the post. Any questions? Thank you, Thank you. Merlin. Give it to Virginia. Virginia Scholarship. Hello, everyone. First, I, I want to thank all of you. Hope I get through this. <laughs> for sharing Celebration of Life last week for my husband and for your many cards and condolences. It's been a difficult year. This was a difficult time, but you have made it less difficult, and I so appreciate you for doing that. Okay, the scholarship committee met on September 11th, and we had three uh, applications. Michelle D. Rivera, you remember, is working on being an occupational therapist. She works in the gym now. We awarded her $1,011. Juan Zermino, um, who is in maintenance. Many of you see tall Juan, especially working on lights in the hallways and many other things. Uh, he is working on biomedical technology at the Southern California Institute of Technology and we awarded him $2,468 for his work so far. And then we had Guadalupe, some of you know her as Lupe Martinez. Uh, she's going to True Flow Yoga, uh, intending to become a yoga instructor certified. So those are the three scholarships that were uh, awarded and the checks given. The next meeting of the group will be on November 6th at 2 o'clock in the San Andreas Fall. Thank you, Virginia. Judy, Life in Richmond. Hello, everybody. Uh, the month of October is as busy as we've been. I mean, we've really done a lot. We've added a lot of different things. And you're coming out. That's what's awesome. Um, we are taking a whole lot more people to our events, uh, and we want to keep doing that. I have a couple reminders. We're going to have to do some changes around. Brea Mall cannot be on the 13th, um, and I'm going to change that, and I haven't quite figured out where I want to put it yet, uh, and that's because we have a, memori we have a memorial service. Uh, we're going to go to Target this week. Beach City Band is here tonight, uh, right in here. So come enjoy that. Thursday the 12th, uh, and we've changed that date a little bit, will be our resident staff lunch. Um, that's out in the courtyard. I know it's the same day as the birthday show, but I know we can do two things on one day. Uh, Bram, all I talked about, Lilies of the West. Uh, we rescheduled them, and they will be here on the 14th. They will be out in the, not so much in the courtyard, but in front of the vault where we've been doing our, e our late afternoon performances. It, it seems to be a really nice place because it's shaded, uh, and the sound kind of echoes up. Uh, it will be a continuation of Virginia Spence's birthday. Um, she's just, she's just oh, totally overwhelmed with all that we've done and the family and all that you've done. She's truly appreciative of all the cards uh, that you sent. It's not every day you turn 100. So keep it up. I want to do 10 more of these in the future. What time is that? 
Uh, at 3.30, we're gonna have bingo at two, and then uh, we'll be ready to do that at 3.30. I do have a new person working for me. Her name is Stephanie. She is working Tuesdays through Saturday, so please stop by, say hello, and you know what? Wear your name badge so that she can um, have some idea as to who you are and, and without having to ask, because she'll probably forget your name, but if she sees your name, um, and I think she's gonna work out really well. She is at extension 714-507-1312. She is 1312. I have some interesting um, speakers coming in. We did have uh, this, we did have the doc talk and uh, talked on Parkinson's disease. Uh, we're going to schedule one every month. Uh, so if there's a particular um, particular ailment or a particular subject that you would like us to present, let me know. And if Anthony can't do it, I will try to get a speaker in who will be able to talk on that particular subject. Um, sense of Place is on the 16th. That's Monday the 16th. Uh, those of you who are in it know your times and your place. Bingo will then be in the Red Chair Lounge on that particular day. We can't we can't give up bingo, but it'll be in the, in the Red Chair Lounge. I have added Scrabble. I have a request for people to play Scrabble, and that is on every Tuesday at 2 p.m., and that, too, is in the Red Chair Lounge. Let's see. Then, on some of these Thursdays, Thursday the 20th, we, I have Bob Hartman coming uh, at 3 o'clock. Some of you will remember Bob, he is a docent at the Midway uh, down in uh, San Diego. He has great presentations. We have so many new residents uh, since the last time he was here. So please come, uh, he has great PowerPoint presentations and I think he has four of, four of them. So this will be the first one. Very, very knowledgeable uh, and his slides are excellent. So please come to that. Um, on the 23rd, Monday the 23rd, you'll see that we have a costume jewelry sale. Probably don't know what that is. I mean, ladies, you know what costume jewelry is. Um, I have a resident who has given me a lot of very good costume jewelry. And I, we've decided, the two of us have decided that I will put it out for a sale for our residents. Uh, the residents, uh, it is from 10:30 to 12:30, and it'll be in the it'll be in the LLC. We're going to open it up first, just for our residents, and then what's left over, we will then have a sale for our for the staff. Um, if you have some costume jewelry and that you'd like to add to this sale, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, the, the jewelry will be reasonably priced, um, and all of the proceeds to that will go to the Circle of Friends. That was this, where this particular individual wanted the proceeds to go. So they're going to the Circle of Friends. Um, let's see, what am I forgetting here? I know we have working wardrobe on here. What's the date on that? Do you know what the date is? The 21th? All right, the 24th is the working wardrobe. There it is, I see it, working wardrobe. That is where we donate our good, nice clothing, ladies and men, to the working uh, wardrobe. Uh, that is an organization, and, and thanks to Mary Glazier and to the Beards ladies, we do this collection. Uh, I am gonna put a sign-up sheet in the book. Sign up if you have clothing that you would like to donate, and at that time, I will also put a sheet in so that you will know what the procedure is and what they're really looking for. So please participate. That's another outreach uh, that Walnut Village uh, does during the year. Go on to Flappy Jacks on the 24th. I know that's a favorite of everybody, so please sign up. On the 26th, which is a Thursday, uh, we're going back to Bowers, and we're gonna do it, uh, the, I think it's the third Thursday, or the fourth Thursday of every month. We're gonna do that from this point through December uh, because their presentations are just awesome. This month and November's uh, will be the uh, music from the 60s. Uh, and you 
will truly enjoy it. It is $15 for those of you who don't have a membership, and it is $10 for those who you have who do have a membership. So please, you know, plan on, on going. I know you will enjoy it. On the 27th, um, Medicare changes again. What's new um, for the, uh, the year 2024? Rather than bringing in a salesperson from a particular company, I'm going to bring in HiCap, which will talk about all of them, and they will help you individually or as a group. Uh, and that's at 3 o'clock. The next exciting thing is Halloween. Going to do something different this year. We are not going to do the Serenity Garden. Um, it was just so much work for two hours. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to create a 2024 calendar, a Walnut Village calendar. And each month we will, we will feature either a staff department or residents. Uh, you will have the opportunity to dress accordingly. Some of the departments have already told me the months that they want. Um, but for the residents, if you do not want to dress in a costume, and we'll put you, we'll make up something if, if you're not a dress, you know, if you're not dressed appropriately for Valentine's Day or Christmas, we, you know, we'll figure out somewhere to put, you, put the picture. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a month, say Father's Day, and we're going to put in a whole lot of uh, ties in a decorative way. And then we're going to take headshots of our guys. And we're going to put them down the ties. We're going to do the same thing for Christmas. We're going to take headshots of our residents and put you as Christmas ornaments. So that we can include as many different residents and staff teams as we can. And then... We will sell these calendars. We will produce these calendars, nice quality. We will sell them. We will allow you to purchase them. And then maybe to give them to your friends and families as gifts. Uh, and all the proceeds from that will go to the Orange County Alzheimer's Association. So it's a win-win situation. It's fun. It's something different. Uh, so please help me. Please participate. There is a sign-up sheet now already in the, uh, in the front of the book. Uh, sign up if you want to participate and tell me the month that you think you're going to get a costume for or make a costume for. I mean, there's Halloween. Um, if you want to be a butterfly, we can put you, uh, you know, in the spring. We will figure out a way to do a vignette according to all the costumes that we have taken pictures of. It's going to be a big job, but I think it's going to be fun, and it's going to be something different, and it's something that Walnut Village will be able to own. So please participate. And thank you. Yes? Are you going to take the pictures on October 3rd? We're going to take the pictures on the, at 2 o'clock on that particular day. So you only have to dress once. We will have a Halloween party following that. The pets are, the kids are coming in from the church. We're gonna have the pet parade. I'm gonna put together a calendar announcing everything. But I'm just trying to pick up all those loose ends. Yes, Lou. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna thank you for arranging the golf trip on the 19th. It's hard to find because it's on the back of the calendar. Oh, that's but it's, Ryan, yes. But it's the, it's the yes. first time that we've had any kind of, I've been in two years, and it's a terrific idea to get away for the afternoon. Unfortunately, I hope it doesn't conflict with the, the, the earthquake thing that's going on that day. And, uh, anyway, yeah, that's true. It's at 8 o'clock in the morning. But um, thank you for that. Thank you. All right, that's Ryan. So we're going to thank Ryan. And, and I hope we get a good attendance. Yeah, and we've done this before. Be Pre-COVID, you used to go. We used to no, we go on we go on hikes. Ryan takes you on a hike every month. So get those walking sticks out and, and join them for that hike. Uh, so we are doing a lot of different things. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Halloween for residents only. Halloween basically is for residents, you know, right? But if you have a friend that wants to dress, the photos in our calendar will be strictly residents. Okay. But there's a lot more going on. As we get closer to it, I will uh, do a flyer to notify everybody. 
I'm already planning New Year's. Uh, I am going to bring back the casino group, so hopefully it's not going to not going to rain, and we'll be able to do it in here. Uh, we're doing Veterans Day, and uh, I'm working ahead, so uh, we're we're going to have a, a good end of this year. Thank you, everybody. Please continue to participate and sign up. If you don't sign up, I don't know you're going on the trip or the outings. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Judy. No. Part of the meeting we've all been waiting for, the results of the library, library survey. 138 copies of the library survey were distributed and 55 were returned. That's 40%, so I think that's a pretty good return. We never get all of them to answer. Not all respondents answered all the questions. A summary of the survey will be in your mailbox later today. If you do not see your comments, we apologize. It was impossible to include all of them. We tried to cover the opinions of the majority of the residents. We have provided the surveys to the library committee in order that they will have all of your comments. Thank you to all, to all of you who took the time to answer the survey. With this information, the library committee knows what is important to the residents of Walnut Village. Now is the time for the drawing. Debbie, would you come do the drawing since you're a neutral party? <laughs> Hopefully. Oh my goodness. Okay. And I'm going to give it to you. Here we go. And it is for? The prize is the $25 Target gift card. And the winner is Sonia Leonard. but I've lost a thumb drive and it's got um, the uh, PowerPoints on it. So it's extra long, it's about this long, it's gray. I've looked in the lost and found and it's not there. And I wonder if anyone picked it up. What is it, baby? A thumb drive, uh, flash drive a flash drive, flash drive. Flash drive. Um, it, it's really unusual shape and I lost it somewhere between the LLC and maybe Debbie's office. But yeah, I wonder if it's well, I'm pretty sure I pulled it out. Well, let's take a look. Yeah. Um, so if you do find it, I'd like to get it back. It's got two PowerPoints on it that I need. <laughs> Thanks. Why is there a TV set in the post? Is that what you said? Yeah. But it, 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 it rotates and it tells you what's going on. Yeah, well, okay. It's channel want. to give you the opportunity in case you can't find it on your TV in your apartment. <laughs> Okay, she wanted to know if we could put a clock in the post. Yeah. Clock. Clock. It does say the time on top of the screen. On the screen. I have a stopping 
you about the post. You need to have a step ladder to get to the upper boxes. And there used to be one, but it's got moved someplace. Probably because it's not safe for a lot of us to get on the ladder. We have that one. Gives you something to fall over. Yes. And hopefully, maybe there'll be somebody in the post that's a little taller than you are that would get it for you. Is there any other new business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Bingo's at two.